Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the TS-65 S-Type. It was uh, first released in 1971 or so, about a year after the TS-65 D-Type, uh, which it is very closely related to. This scope is a sort of a lighter weight version of the TS-65 D. Uh, it costs less. And yet it has the same optics. It has a triplet, semi-apochromat, uh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful objective. This thing is just sweet. Uh, but it's all in a smaller package. And uh, this mount is considerably smaller than the D-type mount from the D-type model. And it's uh, a much nicer... I think, in my in my opinion, this is a, a much nicer package for the for the aperture because this this mount is more than adequate. It's uh, robust enough to hold up a, a tank or any, anything that they're going to put on this. This is a 68 millimeter tube, and uh, this is more than adequate to hold that. Uh, oddly enough, it even has uh, the D type has a finder with a special reticle in it. Here's a picture of that. Anyway, the, with the special reticle in it, you can use the finder for polar alignment, for precise polar alignment. For some reason, they put that on this mount, although this mount is really, it's not capable of accurate polar alignment. You have to use your good old Takahashi wrench. Loosen this thing up. Here, let's tighten this down. And this is very much like the original TS-65. You're just hoping that friction will hold it where it goes. I don't know how you would ever do a real precise, accurate polar alignment. Of course, mostly in those days they were doing a lot of piggyback uh, photography, I think. So this would be, that would probably be, I mean, fine for uh, fairly short exposures, wide angle camera. You could probably use that to polar align. So I don't understand the reason for the for the fancy finder on this one. I um, guess they just had them laying around, so why not put them in the scope? Let's do a side by side comparison: this scope and the TS sixty five D type. This will give you a real sense of the difference in scale between these two scopes. The S type here only weighs about uh, 25, 30 pounds, something like that. This one here, the D-Type, weighs 45 pounds or so. It is really big. I think this scope is big. I mean, this is a big 65 millimeter scope. This thing, this one is a monster. The focuser on this scope has a very, very long draw to it. Unlike the D-Type, which had a draw tube, remember? Here's the counterweight for the S-type versus this counterweight for the D-type. That'll give you an idea of the difference in weight here. This will give you a real sense of the difference in scale between the two mounts. Here's how this scope is packed in its box. First of all, this box is a little bit longer than the TS-65, the regular original version, because although these legs are the same, the telescope OTA is a little bit longer. So these legs are uh, virtually identical to the TS-65 original. The diameter of this tube is the same as the original TS-65 original version. The OTA is longer. Same little 5 by 25 finder. This, by the way, is a replacement. These brown straps always seem to get lost. There's an extra one here I could have used. Anyway, um, this is packed, packed essentially the same way the original TS-65 was. There's an option to put the counterweight here or leave it on the shaft. So this should be free to come out now. It's a 
very end of that. This is a, an accessory case. Got a couple of eyepieces. Star diagonal. This is a certificate of uh, accuracy. This is what my desk looks like today. I've been doing some research on Takahashi telescopes. <laughs> what a mess! For those of you who don't know what this is, this is Tenman Guide, which is roughly the equivalent of Sky and Telescope magazine here in the United States. Um, same kind of thing, it has lots of ads, lots of reviews. Lots of information about astronomy. August 1971. This is a review of the TS-65S model. Quite a detailed review. A lot of information here and it's... Um, you know, I used Google Translate to try and translate it, but it was very difficult. Especially since some of it is highly technical. Is some uh, discussion of the triplet semi um definitions about what that means and so forth. And it's uh, this is a much more detailed article than you'd ever see in Sky and Telescope. Very, very complex. Hard to understand when it's uh, a little above my head already, and then you put it in Japanese on top of that, so... <laughs> I don't know if I have any chance. But by the same token, it does seem to indicate that the uh, triplet semi apochromat is uh, pretty spectacular. Although this is a review of the S model, it's also a review of the D model, which they didn't do a, an official review of the D model. This is a review of the same optics that are in the S, both the S and the D, the triplet, semi apochromat Last night I took this telescope, the S-type telescope out, and I compared it with this telescope. This is a Takahashi Teagull um, from the early 1990s. It's a 60 millimeter, about the same aperture, closed. It's only 500 millimeters focal length, um, but you can compensate for the difference in focal length between these scopes by using the right eyepieces. And I compared them at the same magnifications. And uh, the results are that these telescopes, as far as I'm concerned, performed identically. And the resolution of uh, uh, fine detail on the surface of Jupiter was the, was the same, both scopes, at, at identical powers anyway. I consider them to be both, to be equal. They're both essentially perfect telescopes. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the TS-65S type from 1971. Thank you very much for watching.